Hey everyone, this is Dr. Ruscio. Today I'm here with Ryan Cornett, who has read Healthy Gut, Healthy You, and had some good results from going through the book protocol. And uh, Ryan, thanks for being here today and sharing your story. Absolutely, thank you for having me on. Can you tell people a little bit about, okay, before you read the book, you know, had you done paleo or never heard of paleo or had you tried five different diets or probiotics? Tell people kind of the context of, of before you jumped into the book. Yeah, um, honestly, I've been kind of going out this diet thing for almost a decade now. Mm. Uh, I, I jumped in in nutrition and I felt like I did myself more harm than good to an extent. <laughs> Um, you know, I try, I tried all the crazy diets growing up in a health food store working there, uh, which eventually led me to a raw vegan diet and mm. my stomach just was not happy with that. Couldn't digest the food. Uh, I ended up moving to Hawaii and I was living on a farm and the only thing that would make my stomach feel better at that time was incorporating some raw dairy, some local eggs and starting to do some meat and some kind of like nurturing nutrients at that point. So I started to incorporate more uh, protein into my diet, more animal foods, and I started to feel better, but I just still had this kind of lackluster digestion. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still trying to figure that out. At that point, I went on the diet fad craze. I tried every diet, every book, you name it. I've tried it. I've been there. I've been an extremist, a zealot. And they all made me feel a little bit better, but I still had that residual kind of gas, bloating, indigestion, moodiness after big meals. Right. So at that point, um, I actually went in and did some uh, testing and I did a stool test, GI map, and I came back with Giardia actually. And the physician that I was working with, he thought it could be from the water that I had drank, you know, being in Hawaii. I lived in Costa Rica as well. So, um, you know, I kind of dove in uh, with several different protocols on my own, started working with the physician. Uh, he helped me a little bit as well. But, you know, the thing I really loved about your book, Dr. Ruscio, is that it's a very level headed approach that you took towards this whole gut microbiome. And you really made me feel human again with your book, to be honest, because. Uh, yeah. I, I went through so many protocols. I've been doing the every diet, every guru, every podcast I could ever listen to forever. And your book was the first kind of condensed format that put it into a simple step, you know, the great Nate plan. And it really allowed you to work through it, but not only to work through it, but to say, hey, listen, if you're not better at say step three or four, you know, take a step back and reassess, you know, what's working, what's not working. And there's two quotes from your book. I, I don't know if I'll say them perfectly, but these, these literally changed my life, not, not just from the physical standpoint, but from a psychological standpoint, uh, how I addressed this pro these protocols. Um, well, there's a lot of quotes that are coming up, actually. Well, number one, you said, stop throwing a dietary fix at a non-dietary issue. Mm. It's something to that extent. And that really resonated with me because I keep, I kept bouncing from the gluten-free diet or the, you know, the low carb diet, the high carb diet, the no fruit diet, the whatever it was. And I, I was kind of getting the same results with all of them. And I love the fact that you said, Hey, listen, if you've tried all the diets and you're not really seeing a, a exponential jump, maybe it's time to try a different approach. And maybe that's some of these antimicrobials and some of the therapies that you discussed in your book. So that was really powerful. Another thing you said in the book that helped me a lot was uh, eating to reduce inflammation instead of eating to feed gut bugs. Mm. And so that helped me a lot because I started to think about, you know, maybe a high fiber diet is not what's best for me at this point in time. Maybe cutting back on these prebiotics and these high fiber foods, uh, I can implement other nutrient dense foods to to cover those bases but you know not feed the gut bugs and the overgrowth that i'm currently working with so that was really powerful and then um another thing that you said in the book was something to the extent of you know you don't have to be a hundred percent perfect on these diets oh, that's if a key you're, yeah. yes 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 and that was literally like a psychological backpack I took off my shoulders because, <laughs> you know, I was, 
it literally got to one point where I took every single diet and combined it. And I was doing a low FODMAP, paleo, um, low histamine, you know, anything you can name. I started to, to basically stack it up. And it got to the point where the only thing that was left on my list was uh, meat and leafy greens. And at that point, I'm like, you know, what, what am I doing here? And what, how much exponential benefit am I really getting from this? And I, I promise you, I read that quote from your book and to hear it from someone that's as well educated in research and has as much clinical experience as you, for some reason that gave me a psychological leeway to start to say, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm gonna eat these, these homemade chips with guacamole and you know, I'm eating a little gluten and maybe a little bit of FODMAP, but I'll take extra digestive enzymes or, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll cut back and, you know, not overdo it. I'll just have a few of those, see how I feel. Yeah. And just having that psychological leeway for me was, I, I felt like I turned a page with that. So. Man, I mean, there, there, there's so, so much great stuff there. I don't even know where to begin to try to, try to address some of those things. Um, but I mean, what you're saying is, is something that I have seen so much, which is why I wrote these things into the tapestry of the book. One being not trying to force a dietary solution to a non-dietary problem, A, um, and also to have a, a healthy psychology around this and not you know, pigeonhole you into this progressively restrictive dietary approach and not make you think that you're going to do irrevocable harm to yourself if you eat off plan because that that does damage people and I do see that in the clinic and it's just it's great seeing that even when that's not delivered in the face-to-face -face clinical setting it still carries the amount of weight that it, that it carried before and and then also you know you can have worked with a physician and having previously treated your lab results and this book can still do better than, than that. And, and I, I don't mean to uh, denigrate any doctors out there, but there are some doctors who are very well-intentioned, but if you just treat lab results, if you're working with a doctor who's treating your lab results compared to working with this book, which really listens to your responses and, and evolves a protocol to fit your needs, ironically, the book will be more personalized than a person-to-person a -person interaction with a clinician in many cases. Yes. And I, I also like that you have it segmented by steps because the last time I, I worked through one of your, I worked with a great Nate plan. That was probably about uh, four, four or five months ago. And I just went on vacation. I got back. My stomach's been a little more sluggish. So I've actually been going back to the great Nate plan and I've been working through the protocol again. And I felt like this time when I approached it, I had a completely different mindset towards it. Instead of me being uh, as uh, rigorous and, and being a zealot about doing every single thing at the exact time, now I feel like, hey, I know how this plan works for me. Maybe yeah. this aspect of the plan works, this aspect doesn't. Um, and so I'm able to implement you know, the steps that really get me back to that place of, of good digestion and then I work my way off of it. it mm -hmm. And it, I love it because it's a tool that I now have in my tool belt that I can keep with me anywhere I go. And other people that are struggling with digestion, I say, hey, listen, I, I'm not going to tell you which diet to do. Look, here's a, I love that you built the pyramid and you say, hey, kind of work your way up that pyramid. If paleo works for you, do it. If, if eating a gluten-free diet doesn't make a big difference, maybe try another uh, uh, action to see if that works for your digestion. And I love that because I was stuck for literally almost 10 years in the, in the diet phase of that where, oh, which, <laughs> wow. which diet's going to work? Which, exactly. Yeah. Which diet's going to work? And I'm, I'm glad you say, uh, essentially, that you felt empowered by the protocol, uh, which is exactly, and, and, and I address this in, in the book, of course, which is looking at this protocol as a way to learn what works for you. And then as part of the, the end of the protocol, I say, now that we've gone through this in a step-by-step -step sequence and you've learned what aspects really help you and what ones didn't really provide that much relief, now when you regress, you can go back to the tools that were helpful for you, just like you have, and you don't feel like you're not participating in your healthcare and you're not empowered and, and it's just, well, I've got to go back to the doctor now and this magical person who knows all the stuff that I don't know, tell me what to do. You're, you're involved in the process and you understand now what works for your body. And so just like you said, you feel empowered. You're able to go back, 
select a few things out from the protocol that worked well for you. And I'm assuming get yourself back to 100% much easier the second time with a few little touch-ups rather than when you first went through the protocol and you were learning this all for the first time. Yes, yes, yes. So tell us a little bit about the, some of the symptoms that you were struggling with first and then you know, how did they respond and how are you feeling now? So, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm 28 years old, but I've been relatively healthy my entire life. Um, I started chasing all these guru diets, and that's when my digestion started to kind of tank uh, in my it's early like A little bit of ironic, huh? Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. So, and then at that point, um, you know, I felt like I've been trying to figure out my digestion, like I said, for almost 10 years. But last year, I was in Costa Rica. And I was teaching English over there. I drank a lot of questionable water, just kind of traveling throughout Central America. And, you know, symptoms started popping up that I had never experienced before in my life. And actually, the first two that really told me something was wrong was anxiety and like depression and insomnia. Mm -hmm. And I had never experienced those before in my life, generally optimistic, upbeat. And, and before you had any gut symptoms? No, no, the gut symptoms came along with that. My digestion started kind of, like I said, it was always hit or miss, but it started getting just gassy, bloated, backed up, um, inconsistent with bowel movements. And at that point, I noticed the symptoms correlated with my indigestion. And the symptoms got worse. It got to the point where uh, I, I had to fly home from Costa Rica to go see uh, like a Western doctor because I was just down and out. I was Mm. losing weight. I was, like I said, uh, anxious. Um, I had just yeah. overall, yeah. Which, which is a, 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 just a quick, um, you know, I want to echo that for people because the, the gut symptoms are pretty apparent to most people, gas, bloating, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea. Um, and more people are becoming privy too, but it's worth just expounding upon the fact that those symptoms can directly correlate with insomnia, fatigue, depression, and anxiety. So, um, you know, if you're going on the internet and reading about, oh, serotonin and depression and, uh, you know, SAMe and caffeine, okay, maybe there's a time and a place, but don't overlook the foundational piece of your gut health if you're trying to improve your brain health. And, and, and yeah. so, okay, so, so you're, you're grappling with these symptoms and, uh, you know, what, what happens next? And then, then you pick up a copy of the book and you start going through the protocol and, and yeah, yeah, I, I basically... <laughs> basically hit the internet. I've always been passionate about nutrition, but I hit the internet like a madman. I went, I read every book. Uh, when I, I read a lot of books and I listened to every podcast, every YouTube video, everyone I could. And a lot of people spoke highly of your work. So I was kind of, I, I actually was waiting for your book. So I worked through a couple other protocols prior to your book coming out. Mm. And I felt like I was willy nilly. I was all over the place. Every, everything I heard on a podcast, I would throw it at my stomach. I, there was no right. consolidated plan. So when it I was got like, it was stick to stick to stick kind of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, with one, it was all biofilms with the next one, it was digestive enzymes, but no one really put everything together into a, a step-by-step -step plan to say, Hey, listen, if you're good at step three, stay here for a while and see how you feel. Every, it was kind of like, throw everything at the dartboard, see yeah. what sticks, and you have no idea which one worked. <laughs> and, and having also the appropriate sequence, because there are some things that should be done before other things, and that can be one of the problems when people experiment haphazardly, is it's not necessarily that, that my book contains any magical supplement that no one else has, um, but it's, it's a process. It's, it's codifying these into the appropriate sequence so as to allow healing. And that's, that's one of the quotes in the book also, which is there's no magic protocol or there's no, there's no magic product, but there is, you know, a, a very helpful process. And I think that's kind of what you learned and you didn't even just use the gurus. You also went to a doctor. And so what happened with the doctor? Did he use some kind of antibiotic or antiparasitic agent? And uh, he, he was, he was great. Um, I kind of ran out of funds, honestly. Mm. And I just, we, I did a lot of testing. I did, uh, adrenal panel. I did a uh, thyroid panel. I did neurotransmitters. I did all different panels and I kind of ran out of financial stability at that point. And it got to the point where I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. So I came across your book and your book was kind of the user's guide to 
implement these things and you you laid it out with meta analyses so i said yeah. you know what let's yeah. give it a shot and that's when uh, and, yeah, so what it's another, another good point that you make which is um sometimes people think that you need testing in order to get healthy and the, another concept I, I address head on in the book which is yes there, there can be a time and a place for testing but i mean what a great example you are where you had all this testing yet you didn't really treat any of those results what you did was a logical algorithmic protocol and that's what got you well absent of needing any testing to steer that process so you know i think that's really worth emphasizing for people who are thinking ah oh, you know i'm i'm feeling unwell I'll, I'll do anything we need this data we need this testing I'll, I'll spend all the money i need to but but you don't necessarily have to right i i get that people will spend the money but for the cost of maybe three tests, you could do probably most, if not all of this protocol. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's a, a awesome, awesome point. Um, yeah. Anything else that you think is really important to. Yeah. Yeah. Actually some, something that I just wanted to take my hat off to in the book is that you, you're, you, you're, you cite meta analyses and you say, I highly recommend that you incorporate this aspect based on a consensus of data. And that's great that you make these suggestions, but you will also go even further to say, but listen, if you've tried this aspect of the protocol and it doesn't work specifically for you, maybe don't implement that. And I have a personal story for that is you, you state clear evidence that using probiotics in conjunction with antibiotics shows more efficacious outcomes for remedying gut problems. In, in my situation, I've noticed that I actually do better when I do the, the antimicrobials on the front end and I come in after the antimicrobial therapies and then I start to introduce some of the, the soil-based organisms, the Saccharomyces boulardii, and then eventually the lacto bifido. Me personally, if I throw down a uh, 50 billion, 100 billion, 300 billion lacto bifido. While I'm doing the the kind of the cleaning phase, I get backed up and a little bit gassy. Hmm. And then I, I sit there thinking to myself, is there something wrong with me? Wait, his protocol says you have to do this. But then I read through the book and it says, no, if this doesn't work for you, then didn't skip that yeah. step. Well, another, quote, another quote from the book, one of the uh, most powerful, powerful things you can do to improve your health is learning to listen to your body. And, and literally, it sounds terrible, but I've chased so many guru diets that I felt like this was one of the first books that gave me my power back, honestly. Yeah. Well said. Well yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think, I think that's the quote of the interview right there because this is the, you know, I really wanted to write the book to give people their power back and not make you feel dependent upon supplements or protocols or diets. So, I mean, that makes me feel... Awesome. And, and you know, I can't thank you enough for, for taking the time to, to share your story. Um, in close, anything that you want to leave people with? No, uh, like I said, um, I've never spoken with Dr. Ruscio in my entire life. I've got no affiliation here. <laughs> I, I have spent so much of my 20s sitting in my room, reading books, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, trying to be my own doctor. I've tried pretty much every guru diet doctor pr protocol that's out there. This is a great protocol guys. If you want something that's effective, it's got a step-by-step -step guide. It's honest. It, it, it's based in science and meta analyses and peer reviewed literature. This is a great protocol. And you know, for the price of a book, you can try it out before you go to see a functional medicine doctor and spend an arm and a leg just to, get the results back that tell you to work through this protocol. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Well, hey, I am, I am so happy that you're feeling better. I've been on the other side of feeling well and feeling ill and I know how much it sucks to feel ill and how great it feels to feel well. So, you know, congratulations to you. I'm super happy for Thank you. you. Thank you again for sharing your story. Thank you.